Clostridium botulinum. It's just another day at Grandma's house for little Billy and Susie May. Or so it would seem. Something sinister is afoot. We interrupt your program to bring you this very important message. The paralysis-inducing bacteria Clostridium botulinum is sweeping canned food across the country. Beware of cans with swollen lids, or you too may feel the wrath of bippity boppity butchels. Yucky. My tummy hurts. I don't feel so good. Heavens to Betsy! What could have caused this tragedy? Who is to blame? None other than that sinister fiend. Botulism. Right now that salmon is swarming with Clostridium botulinum bacteria. Our tale starts with two innocent nerve cells. Clostridium botulinum enters the scene. It secretes a powerful neurotoxin that halts the communication. <laughs> Seems to be too late for little Billy and Susie Murray. But wait, there's hope. A powerful antidote saves them from near death. <laughs> we feel much better! Oh my poor dears, I'm so glad you're okay! Oh, I'll make your favorite! Liver and onions! Okay. Remember, next time you go to Grandma's house, watch out for low acid content canned foods such as canned fish, asparagus, and improperly handled potatoes. This bacteria causes botulism in humans, which is a paralytic and potentially fatal disease that originates from soil and untreated water all over the world. This bacteria enters the body through open wounds or produces spores that thrive in improperly canned or preserved food where their toxin is produced. If ingested by humans, even minuscule amounts of this toxin can result in severe food poisoning. The toxin is considered metabolic waste produced under anaerobic conditions by the bacteria, which also affect a wide variety of mammals, fish, and birds. Person-to-person -person contamination of botulism does not occur, however, with the most commonly contaminated foods, including home canned vegetables, cured pork, and ham, smoked or raw fish, honey, and corn. Botulism is a rare but serious type of food poisoning caused by an organism called Bacterium clostridium. The organism generally exists in a dormant state as a spore. In conditions of low oxygen and acidity, such as improperly canned foods, it flourishes in a bacteria form. In high numbers, it produces a powerful toxin. The toxin enters the body through contaminated food, 
though in the case of biological warfare, it could be inhaled. Once the toxin has passed through the stomach and reaches the intestines, it is absorbed into the bloodstream. The toxin leaves the circulatory system at the point where a nerve joins a muscle. Botulism toxin acts by binding to the nerve ending and blocking normal signals for muscle contraction. This results in paralysis of the muscle. Symptoms develop in one to three days and include paralysis of the muscles that control vision, swallowing, and breathing. If untreated, symptoms can progress to respiratory failure resulting in death. Botulism is not contagious. Who does this disease affect, you ask? Well, as well as adults, this disease is very common among infants and can occur if a baby eats living bacteria or its spores because they grow in the baby's gastrointestinal tract. And this result is most commonly caused by eating honey or corn syrup. This particular bacteria is commonly found in some infants' stool. How many cases of botulism are there in a year? Well, there are roughly 110 cases of botulism every year in the United States, most of the cases occurring in infants. There is a laundry list of symptoms that occur as a result of contamination of this bacteria, which generally appear 8 to 36 hours after the contaminated food is ingested, with no fever associated with this disease. The symptoms vary from adults to infants, and the symptoms in adults may include abdominal cramps, breathing difficulty that may lead to respiratory failure, difficulty swallowing and speaking, double vision, dry mouth, nausea, vomiting, and weakness with paralysis, equal on both sides of the body. Symptoms in, in infants include constipation, poor feeding and weak sucking, respiratory distress, weak cry, weakness. How does this disease impact your body? The disease starts in the muscles supplied by the cranial nerves. The weakness and loss of muscle tone. How does this disease impact one's body? The weakness in muscle starts in the muscles supplied by the cranial nerves. The weakness then spreads to the arms, starting the shoulders and proceeding down to the forearms, and legs, again, from the thighs down to the feet, with severe botulism leading to reduced movement of the muscles of respiration and hence problems with, ga with gas exchange. This may be experienced as dys dyspnea or difficulty breathing, but, when, but when, in severe cases, this can lead to respiratory failure. Due to the buildup of unexhaled carbon dioxide and its resultant depressant effect on the brain, this may lead to coma and eventually death if untreated. We are born bacteria-free, but within hours we begin to be colonized with about 400 species of microbes on our skin, in our intestines, in our mouths, noses, and throats. There are more bacteria in our mouths than living people on the planet, more bacteria in our bodies than human cells. Billions are helping to digest our last meal. Those bacteria, E. coli, turn our food into sugars and processed vitamins. They also keep us healthy by occupying spaces that otherwise might be occupied by disease-causing bacteria. But even good bacteria like E. coli can develop deadly strains. Bacteria are good or bad, and sometimes they are both. Remember Saddam Hussein's biological arsenal? He raised bacteria with the graceful name of Clostridia botulina. It causes botulism, a kind of food poisoning we got to know too well before processing methods were improved. When we eat it, we get deathly ill and we die. It's, a very, it's about as, as potent a poison as, as is known, actually. Pound for pound, it, it will kill more things than anything else. 
Six million times more deadly than rattlesnake venom, it is the most toxic substance on Earth. Botulinum toxin could be such a powerful weapon that it's been drafted for war since the 40s. Why don't you flame this here? Scientists suspected there might be a use for the toxin. Ed Schantz began his study of the toxin while working for Army Intelligence during World War II. Until his retirement, he supplied all the botulinum toxin used in scientific and medical research in the nation. Eric Johnson has worked with him for the past 13 years. We purify it by several purification steps, and there's, I would say, 50 milligrams of toxin in this vial here, which is maybe a million lethal doses, so obviously we're very careful with how we handle it. You want a sample? After all his years of research, Dr. Schantz had the imagination to see another application for the toxin. At first, it started with a small bit of pain at the base of the neck, and then eventually, as I'd be driving the car, all of a sudden my head would go to the left. And the only way I could get it back was to take my hand and push it back. Howard Thiel suffers from spasmodic torticollis, a painful disorder caused by hyperactive muscles that twist the neck and can permanently tilt a person's head to the front, back, or side. About 150,000 Americans suffer from this condition. Can you hit the machine? Where's a pipe? Dr. Schantz wondered if the toxin paralyzes muscles, perhaps a tiny amount would relax overactive muscles. Ah, there you go. Ooh, I'd love, Ooh, I'd love to hear that. Buddy, deep. At one one thousandth the lethal dose, the deadly toxin becomes a healer. One left. In the minute I got my first injections, the pain was gone. I mean, it was just, uh, it was a great, great feeling. My life had been given back to me. It's ironic when you take a uh, toxin that can kill people, and all of a sudden it's saving lives. It's ironic, and it's, it's a great thing. Clostridia botulina are strange organisms. Under the right conditions, they grow quickly into large populations. Then the cells destroy themselves, the bacteria die, and the deadly toxin is released. To start a batch of toxin and complete it for medical use, it takes about three weeks. And in that time, we can prepare enough toxin to supply the medical profession for many, many years. And all of it in a tiny tube, as you see on the bench. There is promising research that botulinum toxin will help millions of people suffering from conditions associated with hyperactive muscles, such as Parkinson's disease, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and stuttering. In the meantime, botulinum toxin has become very popular among plastic surgeons like Rhoda Narens. She uses tiny doses of toxin to remove the traces of worry and squinting without a scalpel. It doesn't hurt much, but it isn't cheap. A single treatment costs over five hundred dollars. Where are you recruiting from? Frown for a minute. Okay, relax. Relax. Do it again. Not a lot. Relax. How can a physician detect botulism? Well, when a physical exam is, pre is performed, there potentially could be signs of absent or decreased deep tendon reflexes, absent or decreased gag reflex, eyelid drooping, loss of muscle function or feeling, paralyzed bowel, speech impairment, impairment, or urine retention with inability to urinate. What is the treatment for botulism? Well, the only treatment for this disease is a drug to treat infant botulism known as botulism immune globulin in human. 
Some severe cases of botulism could require a patient to be on a ventilator for weeks. In addition to medical and nursing care, in which case the paralysis would slowly improve. Foodborne and wound botulism can be treated by inducing passive immunity with a horse-derived antitoxin, which blocks the action of toxin circulating in the blood. Physicians may try to remove contaminated foods still in the gut by inducing vomiting or by using enemas. Wounds should be treated, usually surgically, to remove the source of the toxin-producing bacteria completely. There are two primary botulinum antitoxins available for treatment of wound and foodborne botulism. Trivalent botulinum antitoxin is derived from equine sources utilizing whole antibodies. The second antitoxin is heptavalent botulinum antitoxin, which is derived from despeciated equine IgG antibodies, which have had the FC portion cleaved off from the FAB2 portions. This is a less immunogenic antitoxin that is effective against all known strains of botulism where not con contraindicated.